Well, it started in 1991 when I was asked to run a project, a simple three-year project, to build a pan-European data network to support research and education. And I just took it as a job. And I intended, when I'd done that job, to go on and do something else. But the challenge was to create a network which was up to date. And at the time, there was considerable interest in having an internet network. And so, in fact, that's what we'd built. So by 1993, we had a network, but we had no organization to support it. And in, doing, in creating the organization to support it, we created a new job opportunity, which I then decided to take. And I've been uh, doing it ever since. So I, I've been running the pan-European networking organization that supports the pan-European research and education internet. Well, the, the breakthrough moment was, was really because in, in, in 1991, 1992 in, the, in, in, in Europe, there were two camps fighting out the choice of technology. It was very much a sort of big, end versus, big Indian versus little Indian argument. But on the one hand, there was the X25 camp, and the, on the other hand, there was the IP camp. And so I was trying to reconcile these two quite conflicting forces, and... I worked out that I could build a network, which was an, an IP network, but which still allowed X25 to flow over it. And so I managed to find a compromise between these two camps who were fighting one another. And, and so we could move forward, because otherwise it would have been the straight fight. And it was a way out of this sort of conflict between two technical views which are completely opposed to one another. And so eventually, uh, in two or three years, the X25 withered and the network became a pure IP network. That was, I think, quite important from a European perspective because without that sort of lubrication, as it were, the battle would have gone on and it would have been a war of attrition technology-wise, which would not have done anybody any good. I think it's sunny, but maybe there's the odd storm coming up ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, the internet has been a, a huge success. It, it, is, it has created opportunities for people that didn't exist 20 years ago. It has changed society in, in ways that few would have predicted. Uh, and that's all extremely good, but at the same time, there are some downsides of it that really aren't perhaps fully appreciated yet. And I think uh, personal privacy is one area and security is another area and both of those things are potential threats to future development. In practice I think they will be overcome uh, but it's only fair to recognize that although a huge amount has been achieved there are, there are certainly these two areas in my view that, that are potentially problematic looking ahead. My concern really relates to the fact that it will be essentially used by criminals. That you can already see there's a lot of less violent crime. Uh, why do you need to r r hit somebody to rob them if you can do it stealthily uh, 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 using, using, network, using a network and using identity theft? I think that is really a big area of concern. That, that the malefactors will, will utilize this in a way that historically has not been the case, and that's a major problem. I think the thing which I see as being really important is there are a lot of still quite routine jobs where people are adding very little value other than moving information from one place to another. And I think that aspect of work uh, will become increasingly um, rare in the same way that, for example, if you look back, say, 40, 50 years ago, factory work consisted of relatively routine things. Now factory work is a much more sophisticated form of work and the routine things are done automatically. I think the same thing will have happen in an office environment, which should free people up to, to fulfill themselves more in other ways. Uh, that's an extremely, extremely difficult question. I, 
I, I, I think the, the, there are two assumptions in it. One is the we, and the other is the action. I, I don't think the internet is being created by we's, and I don't think it's being created by conscious action among groups. I think it, it is very much something that has evolved in its own right. And so I, I don't really feel that trying to influence the direction too much from a policy point of view, for example, is necessarily a good idea. I think the sort of developments that will come along are uh, much more sophisticated applications that help people in their ordinary lives. Uh, but I think that will happen. I, I, I'm not personally convinced that policy-driven initiatives to create things in the context of the internet are particularly valuable.